Hi everyone, it's Kodakai here. So with the new iPhone 14 Pro that just came out, I wanted to show you guys this project that I've been working on. And it involves the iPhone 14's new feature, Dynamic Island. And so I thought that feature was pretty cool. And I decided to program out my own Dynamic Island on a website right here. And uh, I'll be going over this project to show how it works. And I'll go over the programming that I'm using here. I'm using Next.js and it's very simple. Uh, step through it, but you can really use this in any other programming language. I, I just did it in Next.js and I'll go over the whole step that I did with all the coding and I'll also provide this on my GitHub if you want to stay tuned. But what I'll do is I'll demo this website right now with this uh, lookalike dynamic island and what I plan on doing with it. And then at the end, I'll show you how I set it up in Next.js and the whole coding for it. So stay tuned. So here we go. Here is a quick demo of what I set up and I'm using Next.js like I mentioned and I'm also using Bootstrap to make it look pretty. So I'll step through all that but I just want to show you what I set up right here. Uh, just like the dynamic island, I have the timer up here and all of this is just using CSS and I'll show you how I'm doing it in a minute. And so for an example, if I were to go to a, an about page, see how I do that little loading? And then the island expands just like the dynamic island. You have separate links in here and you can just put whatever you want in here and you load up the about us page. Uh, I have a contact us page, you know, it loads like that. Then if I go back home, it loads right back the time and the date. And some more examples that I want to show what you can do with this dynamic island on a website that I think would be very cool is that if you have a music player, you can load up the music player in the dynamic island, right? Just like the iPhone 14 Pro that I shows you can load up music with an audio bar and you can also have art displayed for the uh, music that you're playing. So let's go down to this other example that I have right here. Let's say if I were to create a chat application and let's say it looks just like this where the web page is a chat app and it has uh, the person that you're chatting with on the left. And so let's say that uh, if you click on someone you can display their info into the island and you can call them, you can chat with them. It shows their status online or what. And let's also say while you're chatting here, you get an incoming call. And so I set it up where, you know, you can get these little notifications, get an incoming call. Here's Sensei Johnny. I just kind of made this up to make it look uh, funny. But, you know, you can answer the call, you can disregard it. And, uh, you know, it shows that it's incoming. And then let's say you get a friend request. You know, you can do multiple things with this little island, you know. Uh, it has a, just a nice little CSS animation with it that expands in and out. And then, you know, you can accept the friend invitation or uh, disregard it. So, yeah, you can do so many things with this that I feel like this would be a really nice feature on a website. But building it specifically for um, your specific app. So, like I said, if you had a chat app, this will work perfectly for it with this little island. Maybe you could even have a toggle if you want to turn that off, you know, put a little toggle on here that says on and off and make this island disappear. But uh, I am doing this in Next.js and it's only using the home page. And so I'll run through this code on Next.js and I'll talk about the issues that you could run into because uh, this Next.js app that I created here is only the index page, it's only the home page. And you'll notice that when I go to like this about page and stuff, it doesn't go to a new URL. It's on the home page and it's just using Next.js with its routing, how it just re refreshes the page. And so it doesn't leave the page. It only refreshes it with the information that you're giving. And that's what's cool about Next.js. You know, it only uh, updates the information that you're, you're updating on the page. And so if I go back to home, see like these are just separate functions that I wrote to load. And yeah, I just wanted to go over this nice little dynamic island imitation type thing that you can possibly run on your website. And so what I'll do is I'll step through the code right now and I'll also make this available on my GitHub. So yeah, let me know what you would use this little dynamic island for on your website to make it better, more informative, more user friendly. I would like to hear that and how you would go about building this thing out because like I said, this is only on the home page. If I were to make this route to separate pages where it refreshes, I would have a on load event where I would make it wait for a while to do a loading screen and to have the animation so that it looks really nice. And then it'll, you know, it'll display this time or display other information like hello 
and all that type of stuff. So yeah, let's step through the code right now and I'll go through it. All right, here we go. I am inside of my Visual Studio code and I have my Next.js app running right here. And as all of you guys know, to run Next.js, you just gotta do npx create next app. And then it creates this boilerplate right here for you, for all the pages. I'll step through this really quick right now. If you go to pages, you'll see that there is an index.js. That's what I modified. That's the only page that I'm using. I did add this underscore document.js file right here, this right here. And what this really does is it just sets up the layout where I can use the head right here and I can add in my um, bootstrap, you know, font awesome and all that other stuff. This is where I added in my bootstrap. And you'll need to do this if you want to set all this up. You have to create this document.js file because it doesn't create it in the boilerplate when you set it up. And then other than that, I am using the global.css file that's in styles right here. And so this is what it has initially. So global lets you use it globally everywhere. But this index.js also has a home.module.css. And what I did was I removed that and I just had everything inside of globals just to make it easy. And uh, I added all of the CSS here where I have all the island and the, you know, the dynamic island stuff. So let me step through that right now. I'm going to go to index.js. And you'll see right here, I am using hooks. I am using use state and you know, the image and link stuff, but this is the main thing right here. I'm using use state to have this page load and run. And I'm writing a lot of set loading and handling the links. So I'll just step through this really quick. The main important thing is we're gonna scroll down here. See, I just have all these handle calls, right? If we go down here to the return part right here, this is what what it's rendering in HTML. So you'll see that I have a nav bar here, right? This is the nav bar with the home about and contact links. And I have an on click event for that to handle each one. So that's what I'm doing for it to refresh the page with the content when I'm clicking on about us or contact. And then this is the main thing right here. This is the dynamic island that I created. So I added a wrapper around it with a div. I have another div here. And this div is called island box with a class. And then I added a toggle with a use state so that I can determine if it's being clicked on so that I can expand it. So this is what the class does to expand island box expand. If it's not toggled, then it's gonna just have the island box. So the island box is what gives it like, you know, the, the looks, the width and the height of it and all that. And then I also have a island div in here. And I believe this island div I style it with a radius so that it can look curved and all that. And then inside of that, I have right here, my next JS react, you know, island content dot icon. So let me show you this island content right here. So we scroll all the way up here. Here's the island content. It is doing the use state on it. So initially when this uh, page loads, it's going to load all of these right here for use state. That's how it works. It's going to load it with this default right here. It's going to set an icon in there. You know, you can call this whatever. I just call the icon and then I'm adding HTML. Here's the timer and I'm just doing nice CSS around it. And then here's the toggle island toggle. It's just true or false. And then this page content here is for the about us page and the contact page where I can switch out HTML content for it. So that's how I'm having it work. But this is not doing the animation though. This is mainly for the content of it. See how icon has just content. And you notice the loading ring when I have the page load and it does a little loading. Uh, this is what is using right here is just a CSS loading ring. So I'll show you that too. So every I try to use CSS as much as I can. I could use a GIF in here, you know, an image GIF, but the uh, CSS works fine and it looks really nice. And here's the handle home. If I click on home page, it just, it defaults it back to the time. So that's how I'm setting it. And so let me give you a little run through, right? So for the home, what I'm doing is I'm saying await set loading. So this is a default where I'm all, always going to call set loading right here. So here's our page, right? Home link, about link and contact. So that's what I'm going over right now. The home link, handle home link. So what it's doing is anytime I click on home, it's going to set this set loading right here, this function call. And then when it runs through this function call, it's going to wait on a timeout, like a one second timeout so that I can show the animation on it. 
and then it's going to set the toggle to false in the meantime you know initially is false false so that it doesn't expand for this island right here this is the default when it's set to um, toggle false this island width is just that width then I set the content for uh, the island content and I set the icon to have a loading ring because I wanted to do this little loading animation let me show you right here right see how that loading animation so if I click on home it does a little loading animation like that so it, it set, and then it sets this loading then after it does this set uh, loading right here and it, and it waits for it I do another timeout and I give this a longer timeout so that I can do a, a really nice animation on this. And I'm saying, telling it to set the content, set it to the clock. I set this page content right here. And I'll, I'll tell you why I'm setting it to empty. I always have to default to empty in case I'm on the about page or the contact page. Because there might be content and I want to clear that out. And then I set the toggle to false right here. And uh, toggle false so that it can... Uh, so the width on this can be small like that when the toggle is true the width gets larger like this see how it expands like that the width is larger so that's toggling true so let me go back here here i'll give you another example the handle music so that handle music is this thing right here right i click on it look how it loads it does the animation then it loads the content in here and then you'll notice this width is larger look at it again see that loading expands default default is small and then when the toggle is true it makes it wider and it animates it and so that's what this um, handle music is doing see it, it always calls to set loading and it does some timeouts on it so that so that I can have time to load in the content then I set the island content and this is just the music player you see how I just have some images in here you can put like the um, the cover art and then I'm just using really simple uh, what is this like hex in here it's a hex code so that I just have to play buttons and then I just have this little uh, JF equalizer thing right here to make it look pretty you know that's all I'm doing but you can really just add any content you want in here and then once again I set the page content so that it can be empty then and then I set this toggle to be true so remember up here when I'm at the home page I set the toggle to false because I want the small island now that I have content in here, I want the toggle to be true so that I can have this bigger island. It expands out. So what I'll do is uh, I'm going to step you through the CSS because the CSS is what does the animation. And I'll show you the island code animation in here. And so here's the island wrapper, right? And then here's the island box. And so you'll see here how I'm setting it up. I'm having a float. I'm having the island float in the middle. I'm setting a width to it. And a height then I'm doing this WebKit transition right here in a transition see it's just easing in and out so you can set a timer on this however you want but each box is doing an animation look at this island box had an animation and then the island expand has an animation so that when the width becomes 150 it's going to animate that back to 150 then when I add on this other CSS class island box expand it's going to make the width 300 and animate it so you see when I remove this class from the div, it's going to go back to this and then it's going to animate it. So it animates on each one. And that's what makes it smooth right here. See it animates on each one. Removing, see like removing the class, adding on the class. Removing, adding on the class. And it just animates it. And then here is the island uh, CSS right here. You know, I'm adding a border radius right here, 25, so that I can have the curves. This is the border radius to have the curves. So yeah, that's how it works with this type of um, dynamic island imitation that I created. Oh, here's the uh, island hover. So you notice right here when I hover over the island, it does a scale. So it's a nice little scale animation. And that's what it is right here. I transform it to scale. Then I transition that. And all of this other stuff is just, you know, uh, let me show you the loading. Let me go down here, the loading. So here's the loading animation, right, for that ring. Here's the ring loading animation right there. See that ring? So I have that ring loading every time I click on something. And it's really just CSS. If you look at it right here, see LDS ring. I put a div around it and just animate it.
and it animates it using keyframes right here, LDS rings. And you know, I got this off of the web. I was searching for loading animation. There's so many different CSS loading animations. You can just grab a bunch of them off of the web. And so, yeah, see, it does that white animation loading ring. And all this is just content I add in here. This is bootstrap icons. All these are bootstrap. And then you can, yeah, like I said, you can add in any anything you want. Like this little icon, like phone ringing icon thing is, is using keyframes with CSS, same thing. So it's pretty cool. I found that off of the web. But yeah, all of this is CSS. And that is how I created this dy dynamic island just to float over the page. And it looks so nice. So yeah, that is my dynamic island uh, demo right there with code. And like I said, I'll include all of this code that I have inside my GitHub, you know, right here. I have github.com slash Kodakai. And I have all my repositories in here. And if you never worked with React and hooks before, you know, uh, I have a tutorial on it, Node React Hooks, and I add all of my code in my GitHub here. So go check out my video on that for Node React Hooks. And as you know, Next.js just uses React and Hooks and all that. It's just uh, the difference with Next.js is that it only refreshes the content on the page that has been changed. So that's what's really cool about Next.js. It's just really React with hooks and everything. But as I'm updating things, it's only updating the part that the code that is being updated so as i'm setting these right here it's only refreshing the pages on these codes right here so that's what's really awesome about uh, next.js it's not refreshing the whole page it's only refreshing the code that you're editing if you look at the html for it's very simple like i said here is the menu you know the nav bar menu and then this is the island and it just floats on top and then here's my content right here Seeing that I add the page content.html, that is for the about us and contact page. And then these are just the examples I have on here where I do an on click and then I, I handle it. I handle the on click animation to show you what content to be in there. So that's really all it is. It, the main thing is this, this island right here so that you can just add content in there and making it animate with CSS. So that's going to be it today for this dynamic island tutorial that I showed right here. A little web page with the dynamic island, how I programmed it out using Next.js. Uh, please give this video a like if you enjoyed it and if it helped you out. And if you stay tuned for the next couple of videos, I will do a Next.js tutorial, I think. Um, I'll show you how to program in Next.js and we'll set up a nice little website using it. But for now, yeah, please give this video a like, share it, and I hope to see you in the next video. Code Kai out.